Hello, in this video I will introduce quaternions as an alternative to represent 3D rotations widely used in robotics, but also in other fields such as computer graphics. The aims of the presentation are to understand the concept of a quaternion as well as its elements. We will learn how to perform basic rotations and show some simple examples. We will also learn how to perform rotation composition operations, the inverse of a rotation and the rotation of a point with quaternions as well as the conversion between quaternions and rotation matrices. Finally, we will analyze the advantages and disadvantages of using quaternions compared to rotation matrices. Quaternion is built with a real component and three imaginary components orthogonal to them. Therefore, a quaternion has four coordinates, qw, qx, qy, and qz, although sometimes we will also refer to these coordinates as q0, q1, q2, and q3. The real coordinate has been highlighted in red, while the imaginary coordinates have been highlighted in orange, so that you can distinguish between them. Anyway, we will represent the orientation with a quaternion with a vector with four components. Quaternions fulfill an important property, that is, the norm of a quaternion must be one. Numerically, this has more stable numerical properties than rotation matrices normalization because in rotation matrices we need to set the determinant to 1 and also make sure that the rows and calls are orthonormal. Quaternions can be seen as a rotation of an angle theta through a given axis u. A unit vector multiplied by the sin of the semi-angle will provide us the imaginary components of the quaternion, while the cosine of the semi-angle is the real component of the quaternion. Basic rotations are rotations along the axis of the reference system, that is, rotations around x, y, and z axis. We can represent these rotations with quaternions if we use the angle vector formula that I have previously shown. With these basic rotations, we can perform rotation compositions to obtain any 3D orientation, as we will see. Indeed, the quaternion multiplication is equivalent to the rotation of one reference frame with respect to another one. And this is the basis of the rotation composition. As it can be shown, given two quaternions, the first representing the orientation of a first reference frame and the second one representing the orientation of a second reference frame with respect to the first one, the orientation of the second reference frame with respect to the global frame is indeed the multiplication of these two quaternions. The operator appears, uh, or the, the operator that appears between both quaternions represents the quaternion multiplication operator. In total, this operation involves 16 multiplications and 9 additions. Thus, we can perform the composition of rotations by performing multiplication operations between quaternions. If we do the rotation with respect to the fixed reference frame, we must pre-multiply the basic rotation with the current orientation defined by a quaternion with the previous iteration to obtain the quaternion after the new rotation. In the same way, if we perform a rotation with respect to the mobile reference frame, the orientation that we need to perform, sorry, the, the, the operation that we need to perform is the post multiplication between quaternions. As you can see, the order of the multiplications between quaternions, it is important, exactly the same as in rotation matrices, since the quaternion multiplication operator is not commutative. Now let's see an example in which we can apply three turns, first one around the x-axis, the second one around the y-axis in the opposite direction, and finally we apply a third turn around the z-axis, all of them with respect to a fixed reference frame. In this case, we must pre-multiply the basic rotations, and for this reason they appear in the opposite order as we apply them. The resulting quaternion multiplication sequence as indicated in the figures represents each of the turns that we apply in order to get the final result orientation. To get the numerical results that I've shown here, we must apply the quaternion multiplication operator that I have previously explained using basic rotations defined by qx, qy, and qz quaternions. 
Similarly, we can perform rotation operations with quaternions, but this time with rotations with respect to the mobile reference frame. In this case, the operation that we must perform is a post-multiplication of quaternions, obtaining different results compared to the previous example, because the axis of the mobile reference frame changes their direction as we apply the rotations. To obtain the inverse of our rotation when we use quaternions is very simple. We simply have to compute the conjugated quaternion, which implies that the last three elements are simply negated. We can easily verify that both the left and right multiplication of the conjugate quaternion makes the resulting orientation equivalent to a zero rotation operation. If we want to perform the rotation operation to a point or a vector, we must first construct the quaternion associated with the point and pre-multiply it with the quaternion we want to rotate and post-multiply it with the conjugated quaternion. Formally, the quaternion of the point should be normalized and then we should undo the operation, but the fact is that this is not necessary since the operation is usually implemented by converting the quaternion to a rotation matrix using the expression shown. This is one of the most efficient ways to perform the point rotation operation. The expression actually can be derived from the quaternion multiplication operator and its conjugate factoring the elements of the point. The conversion from a quaternion to a rotation matrix has a cost of 9 multiplications and 12 additions, while the point rotation with a rotation matrix has a cost of 9 multiplications and 6 additions. On the other hand, the conversion of a rotation matrix to a quaternion is trickier. We must first check the trace of a rotation matrix. If it is greater than 0, then we can apply the first provided expression to compute the quaternion. However, if the trace is zero or numerically close to zero, then we should apply one of the other three expressions. In that case, we must identify which is the largest element in the trace and apply the corresponding formula. Obviously, I put all this formula here just for reference. You don't need to remember all these expressions. Just Google them in case you need them. To finish with the presentation, I would like to make a comparison between rotation matrices and quaternions which will lead us to obtain a set of advantages and disadvantages regarding the use of quaternions. Its storage is much less, and the rotation composition operator, it is, which is very common in robotics, involves fewer operations than if we perform these operations with rotation matrices. However, the rotation of a point, as we need them to compute the rotation matrices, it is obviously more expensive in terms of the required multiplications and additions. However, if we apply this for a set of points with the same orientation, we hardly notice the increase in terms of the amount of operations. The inverse of uh, rotation is easier uh, in quaternions than in rotation matrices since we only involves changing the sign of the three last elements of the quaternion. Rotation matrices normalization is more complex than quaternion vector normalization, and this operation might be necessary to obtain numerically stable results. Therefore, and as a conclusion, we can say that notation of quaternions is more compact and computationally more efficient. Furthermore, they do not present the gimbal lock problem as it is the case of Euler angles, and they are numerically more stable. As disadvantages, we can say that quaternions are more complex to visualize, and obviously we know already that the rotation of a point is computationally more expensive compared to the use of rotation matrices. In this video, we have introduced quaternions. We have seen some of their main properties and operators, as well as we have analyzed the advantages and disadvantages of their use compared to rotation matrices. Thank you very much.